This is the hub dynamo system supplied by Brompton. It can be fitted when you order your Brompton or it can be fitted after market. So what's in the packet? First up, we have a look at the wheel. This has an SP SV8 dynamo. SP, short for shutter products, they used to make camera products. This is the black version to go with my black edition bike. The wheel has black spokes and has a black rim except for braking surfaces. It's also available in a silver version. This is the SP Dynamo Hub. It was introduced by Brompton in 2019 to replace the Son and Shimano Hub Dynamos. It has a hollow axle and this is the Hub Dynamo connector. Because we always want to know how much everything weighs when we put it on our bicycle, we thought we'd take the weight. 790 grams. So, what else is in the bag? A box? Let's open the box. Some yellow rim tape. We have the front dynamo though. The rear dynamo light. A collection of fixtures and fittings. And the rear wiring loom. What's that included? A tower and inner tube. This little light is from Bush and Muller. It's the Lumatech Plus. It's a dynamo light. It has the connector already fitted. The connector from SP is also compatible with the Shimano Hub Dynamo. It also has a stand-like function, so it stays on a slightly lower brightness for a little bit period of time after you stop pedaling. So on the back of the light, you've got the output to power your rear light. You've also got an on-off switch, so you can turn the light off to keep your station master happy. Hopefully you can see the bright LEDs inside the light. And there's also a built-in reflector around the outside of the light. The rear light included is a Solo by Spanninger. It has a big red reflector with a light underneath. It also has the connections for your dynamo. Next, we need a bicycle. Tools required a 15mm spanner to remove the old wheel and a 4mm Allen key to install the new wheel. These, of course, come in the Brompton toolkit. 15mm spanner, 4mm Allen key. First of all, we're going to remove the old wheel. Keeping everything in the right order. Then I'm going to undo the other side. Brompton makes a nice work stand once you've removed your front wheel. You just need to put him down carefully. So I'm just going to lay out the parts in the order that I'm going to put them onto the bicycle. So I'm going to get rid of the old bolt and washer and put the skewer bolt and bush in the order that they're going to fit on. I'm also then going to take away the bolt and the washer that came off the other side and put the nut in the place it's going to go. The dynamo tab moves on the wheel so you can position it once you've installed the wheel. The next thing we're going to do is pop the wheel in. We obviously want to make this sure the rotation is going the right way for both the wheel and the dynamo. That is it. The dynamo tab needs to be at 90 degrees to the dropouts. I find it easier to put the tab washer in place first. Then I'm going to put the bush through the skewer bowl and put that through the axle. First of all I'm going to put the tab washer in place. And then I'm going to put the nut on. Then I'm going to finish doing him up with the 4mm Allen key to 8 newton meters. The 
before we go any further, we're just going to check everything working. Next, we're going to install the wire form bracket, or the front light bracket. For this, we need a 5mm Allen key. For older style bronzes, we use a 10mm spanner. The reason we need this is to undo the front brake caliper. So, we're going to undo the brake caliper using our 5mm Allen key. We're going to remove the old reflector, saving the washer. The wire form or front light adapter comes with everything that you need to install it, but because we had a newer style Brompton, we're just going to reuse the washer and the spacer. The next step is fitting the front light and routing the cable loom. We have the fitment for the front light. A bolt, nuts and two washers. There's also a cable routing guide if you have no front mud guard. The spades are eventually going to fit into the output in the front light. The rear cable loom goes underneath the fork but over the mud guard, then goes over the front light mount, ready to be fitted into the front light. If you don't have a front mud guard, you have this cable routing adapter that goes on here. We think it's easier to put the spades into the front light before you fit the cable routing. They need a firm push. So now we've got the spades attached, we're going to do the cable routing for the front light. It just sits down the outside of the forks and then plugs into the dynamo. We're going to position the light. And then attach him with the washer. The bolt with the washer this side. Up, we're going to use a 4mm Allen key and an 8mm spanner to hold the nut to the other side. Making sure you've got your lights at an appropriate angle. In the kit, you have lots of cable ties. One special, it's longer than the others. We need him for the front. We need three cable ties for the front. The long one goes at the top, just under the crown of the forks. The next one goes just above the mudguard connector. And the third one goes on the thinner bit of the forks. We'll cut the ends off later. The rear cable loom goes underneath the forks, like this. It does not go through this. The metal loop on the frame doesn't go through that. However, it goes downwards through this guide. The cable loom continues to follow the path of the cables. It passes through the centre cable guide here. From the centre cable guide, the rear cable loom goes into the rear chainstay, which is hollow. From the 
axle plate hole, the rear light loom goes up the inside of the seat staging and then we'll go into the bottom of the light. The rear dynamo light will fit on the bracket from your older light or reflector. You need to remove the light from the bracket using an 8mm spanner. This is the Brompton standard bracket with 50mm between the screws. So we're going to take off the heat shrunk plastic. Then we're going to pop it through the connector. Now let's see if we can do the black one. Next, we're going to put the connector into the light. It's keyed so it only goes one way in. It's round on one side and flat on the other. The connector is round on one side and flat on the other. Tools required, a Phillips screwdriver. The next step is to secure the loom in place with cable ties. We're just going to move the excess back through the seat stay tube, making sure it's not too tight. The cable loom wants to go on the inside of the seat stay tube. We want to make sure he's away from the chain. So, we're going to put lots of cable ties in place, loosely, and then we'll tighten them all up at the end. That one's a little bit tricky. So one cable tie just goes around the rear lumen itself to hold it in place. Again, we're not going to do anything tight until we've finished. There's two cable ties that go above the cable routing guide, actually above the hinge. For this cable tie, there has to be a minimum of 40 millimeters or four centimeters between this cable guide and the cable tie.
guide, please click on the bell icon. Where's the instruction manual? Tools required. Pair of scissors. Tools required to remove the old wheel, a 15mm... What's it called? Tools required. One can of Red Bull.